of the street first on the left, mate. Cheers, thanks a lot. If he's a probationer, why is he coming here? I mean, they're usually sent to bigger stations where there's more supervision. Well, it's probably a vote of confidence in you, Ventress. Me? I assume a senior pro here will want to look after his progress. Well, good. Will they need a desk, Sarge? Only we're a bit cramped in here already. Oh, you can use whatever's available, Bellamy. Apart from parade, there's no need for you all to congregate in here. Your beat bobby is not bell ringers. Morning. I'm Nicholson, Sarge. Come through, Nicholson. Ashford Lee Police Station. You can put your bag there for the time being. Uh, it's Lord Ashford Lee for you, Sarge. Oh, I'll take it in my office. Make yourself at home, Nicholson. Mrs. Parker. Hello. It's uh, David from Scripps Taxis. Yes, of course. Well, you, you called us to come pick you up, remember? Yes, but I've forgotten where I wanted to go. Oh, shops. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> I'll just slip a coat on. Oh, you'll need your purse and your keys. And uh, shopping list, Mrs. Parker. Right. Hey, you got your keys and your money? Yes, in my handbag. Where is it? Just a second. Just two cells? Yeah. They must get crowded. Not really. Mind you, you might find it a bit quiet after Scarborough. Yeah, right, Scarborough. Eh, Sin City. <laughs> oh, come on. You must have had a few mods and rockers kicking over sandcastles. Yeah, true. So why here, then? Just following orders. Well, that's about it, Tom. Thanks. Oh, uh, feel free to look through the files. Right. Where do I sit? Oh, well, uh, this is my desk. And this is mine. And that one? Yeah. Good choice. Settle yourself in. Right. Oh, just one more question. Where's the older? Uh, yeah, well, it's back through there in the cells. Well, he seems right enough. Do we know anyone in Scarborough? I'll make inquiries. Thank you. I'm just sure all the pieces were here yesterday. 
Positive. I came in to help prepare for the party. I'd have seen straight away if anything were missing. And uh, the doors are locked? No. Why not? It's never been necessary. I see. Right, well, could you um, describe to me the, the missing objects? Well, they were sort of carved figures, darkish, foreign. Not very nice, to be honest. Search me why I wanted to show them off. Right. I see. And you say this is not the first time things have gone missing? No. Lost some pieces after a party a couple of weeks ago. But you didn't report it. Well, that was a dinner party. Friends, acquaintances. Didn't want to risk offending anyone, and that's still the case. I don't follow. I don't want you questioning my guests, Craddock. I just want the items listed and looked out for. I see. And were the objects valuable? Well, I've no idea, but they were valuable to me because they've been handed down through generations. Oh, so you'll have no problem describing them? Ah. Uh, carved figures, dark wood, crudely made. That's it? Well, if you need some more, you better have a word with Patrick Mason. Patrick Mason? Yes. Postgraduate student up from London. Asked if he'd come here and uh, do a thesis on my family history. There's been catalogue in my collection, rootling around in the attic. You've taken your time. Oh, well, uh... <coughs> That's why Mrs. Parker at the shops. As long as you've added the waiting time to a fair. Oh, well, uh, you know, I would have done only a... Only what? Didn't come back. Didn't come back? You mean she... Yeah, she, uh, went home on the bus. You what? Well, she, she must have forgotten that I was waiting for her. David, I'm trying to run a business here. Oh, I can't help it, can I? Look, just go and ask her for the money. I can't do that. Why not? Well, because she'd forgotten that I took her anywhere. Well, tell her. Go on now. And if she wants to go shopping, do the job properly. Go shopping with her. <sighs> Mr. Mason. Hello. Sergeant Craddock and Constable Bradley, Ashfordley Police. Hello. Yeah, mind the floorboards. Right, thank you. Lord Ashfordley has asked us to look into the disappearance of certain artefacts from his display cabinet. Really? He thought you might be able to give us a description of the missing pieces. Oh. Uh, well, that rather depends on whether I've catalogued the display cases in question. I spend most of my time reading around up here. Hmm? Looking for what, exactly? <sighs> Pictures, books, relics. Anything that might shed light on the family's colonial past. Well, I wasn't aware they had a colonial past. And most landed families in this country have. So why come here? Well, I thought it was a fair chance nobody got here before me. <laughs> You're probably right. And Lord Ashford Lee offered me free accommodation, so it wasn't a hard choice. Yeah, I, I think he's hoping I'll find something valuable up here. He's got to be a suspect. Patrick Mason. Yeah, he's got access to the house. He knows what he's looking for. Maybe so. He just didn't seem a likely villain to me. You got anything for any of the staff? Not really. None of them could understand why anybody would want to nick them. Oh, somebody has. So without frightening the horses, we better get looking. Right, Sarge. Well, where is he? In the cells. What for? Shoplifting. With an accomplice. Well, this accomplice wouldn't be an 80-year-old with the memory of a goldfish, would it? You've got it. Her daughter was in earlier to collect her. You're not charging him, are you? No. Just teaching him not to mix with hooligan grannies. Phil, go and let David out, will you? If we keep him any longer, we'll be expecting his dinner. Yeah, but it was you that said take her shopping. I know what I said, David. But she, she didn't remember putting the things in her pocket. But she certainly had you in her pocket. And she forgot to pay. No, anyway, it's not her fault. David! What? Shut up. Right. And tomorrow, I'll do the driving. Settling in all right, Leo? Yes, Sergeant. Constable Venter has been showing you the ropes, has he? Oh, yes, Sarge. All he needs to know. He can find the toilet and the teapot blindfold. Ventress knows I'm all for a laugh and a joke, on an occasional basis. 
What's been going on at Ashfordley Hall? Some family heirlooms have disappeared. Break in? Oh, no, apparently not. Um, they went missing after they held two parties there. Only Lord Ashfordley does not want his guests bothered. He would rather we traipse around the antique shops looking for them. Well, I hope you told him we've got better things to do with our time, Sarge. He wouldn't have believed me, Vantress. Search starts here. African carvings and mask. Uh, ugly looking things, according to Mrs. Kellett, the cleaner. Said they um, gave her the jitters. Jessie Kellett? Yes. Said they gave her the jitters? Hmm, why? Well, she reckons she's a medium. A spiritualist, you mean? Yes. Mrs. Ventress went to see her to get in touch with her mother. And did she? No. She got a whiff of her uncle, though. Well, he was a bit of a spiritualist himself. One bottle a day, in fact. I take it you don't take Mrs. Kellett's powers very seriously, then, Alf? Oh, I wouldn't say that. People swear that she's genuine. Did uh, she have access to any of these missing pieces? Mm-hmm. I put her in the frame, then. Why is that, then? Well, she probably disposed of them to save Lord Ashfordley from a damn good haunting. Sorry to trouble you again, Mrs. Kellett. What is it? Well, I'd just like to ask you a couple more questions. Oh? Do you mind if I come in? More questions, you say? Yes. Patrick Mason couldn't give us a much better description of the missing articles than you. Oh? I was wondering whether you'd like to try again for us. Well, like I said, they were wood sculptures. One was so high, and the other smaller. They weren't lifelike. They had big heads and hands, but little legs. But you've already told me that they gave you the jitters. They didn't belong there. Not to my way of thinking. Uh, does anything else in the hall give you the jitters? Why? What's this about, Constable? Well, I've just explained. No, you haven't. You're up to something. Well, when I spoke to you last, you seemed to react rather strangely. What do you mean? Well, you weren't too unhappy to see them gone. Almost relieved, in fact. What are you saying? That I took them because I didn't like them, is that it? I'm not suggesting anything, Mrs Kellett. I've told you what I know, Constable. So if you've done, I'd like to get on. Where is he? Nipped out to get a snack while you dug up. A friend in Scarborough sent me this. Our sprog made quite a splash. Go on. They got carried away on Scarborough skipping day. <laughs> well, daft, but harmless. Maximum penalty, drinks all round for looking away. Hold on. This is what really put the skids under him. His helmet. Yes, he gave it to a kid to hold while he skipped. Hey, presto, the face of law and order, Scarborough style. Oh, dear. Sergeants go, we can do a lot worse than Craddock. What do you say, Alf? Worse? But not a lot worse. Oh, come on, Alf. He's not a bad skipper. Skipper? Of the team. Oh. <laughs> Has he got any pet hates? Make one or two. Don't be late. Right. Uh, and don't be early. It makes us look late. Right. Uh, he hates bad spelling. Long hair, weak tea. Dirty boots, smoking in the station. Right. Worst of all, he hates defence solicitors who get villains bail so they can go off and do more jobs while they're waiting to be sent down. Law's a donkey, he says. Donkey? He means ass. What? The expression is, the law's an ass. All right. Keep your helmet on. Patrick, hard at it again. Yeah. Sooner you than me. 
I now have to open one of these blighters and fast asleep. Thought I'd show you this letter I got this morning from a uh, Daniel Maketso. Ever heard of him? Maketso? No, no, I don't think I have. Well, he was born in South Africa, but now apparently lives in London and uh, succeeded his father as the chief of the Hosa tribe. Says he's travelling north and wants to meet me. I was rather hoping he might be able to mark my card. I'll see what I can find. Good man. Sad and lonely. Why did you leave me lonely? Cause here's a heart that's only for. What you looking me? Oh, just my snake. I'm burning like a flame, dear. I'll never be the same, dear. I'll always place the blame, dear. I think my snake's gone. What do you mean it's gone? It's gone. You're driving crazy. What did I do? Oh, what did I do? My tears for you Make everything easy What did I do To you Here we are, young man Fresh pot, if you like. No thanks. This suits my mood. It was that a quiet day, was it? If only. Never mind. Got some bookings for tomorrow. I want one of them looks right important. Oh, well, you better hose down the car then. Hey, it's spotless. Not inside, it isn't. Take a mop and a bucket and a wallpaper scraper. How many more? Eh? Oh, about half a dozen or so. African carved figures with big heads and little legs. They'll be daft enough to try sending them locally. They'll be in the smoke by now. Not the point. They have to be seen to be doing the job. What, because he's lord of the manor? Nope, because he's chairman on the bench. <laughs> well, you've got a thing about authority, have you? What do you mean? Like to cock a snook, do you? Not especially. Oh, it's not what I've heard. Who told you? About what? About Scarborough. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> Yeah. Nice one. Come on. What to do? Scripps taxis? Oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mo. Mo. Mo Ketsu. Mo. Yeah. I am, uh... If you don't mind. Lord Ashley remembered that he'd got this picture in his family album. Now, this piece and this one are missing. Where's your description again? I'm no expert on African stuff, but I don't think your post-grad student is either. 
If you can leave this with me, I'll show it to someone who knows what they're talking about. Right. Thanks very much, Sheriff. Is it? Well, the messenger brought this from Ashford Lee Hall. It's addressed to a chief, Daniel Mochetzo, care of the Aidens Field Arms. Is someone having us on? I've no idea. Who have you got booked in for B&B? Mr and Mrs Bannister and a Mr Kitson. Mr Kitson? Well, I think that's what he said on the phone. Kitson, Mochetzo. It could be him. Oh, oh. oh! This is Mr. Mo Mokenzo. Yeah, He's uh, booked in here. Ah, Chief Mokenzo, welcome to the Aidensfield Arms. Thank you. Chief? Yes, David. I'm sorry, but how do you know I was a chief? Well, there was a letter arrived for you, sir, from Lord Ashford Lee. Uh, this is Gina. Hiya. Excuse me. Aidensfield Arms. Very pleased to meet you, Your Highness. <laughs> Please call me Daniel. I'm a chieftain, but I was educated in this country. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you just hang on. I'm actually an accountant. I go to work on the tube. Honestly. Chief, telephone. Thank you. Hello? Daniel, it's me, Patrick. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Why are you here, Daniel? It's not here. I've looked. Lots of other stuff, though. <laughs> Sounds promising. When are we going to meet? I don't know. What, your thesis allow you even one drink? No. It's best if we don't meet. Why not? Look, trust me, Daniel. Till you hear from me again, you don't know me, right? Sergeant Craddock, sir. Thank you. Ah, news, Craddock? No, I'm afraid not, sir. I photograph not much help. Well, it's too soon to tell. We're having an expert look at it now. Apparently Mr Mason's descriptions were a bit wide of the mark. Uh, well, he's a history student, Craddock, not a dealer. Ah, I suppose so. Sir, have you thought of having the grounds thoroughly searched? What do you mean? Well, one or two of your members of staff have referred to the parties as being a bit boisterous. Boisterous? Well, you know, the sort of do where things get misused. Have you thought of dredging the fountain? Fountain? For heaven's sake, Craddock, this isn't some rugby clubhouse. Most of my guests are the epitome of good manners, as you'd see if you came this evening. This evening? I'm holding a reception party for a distinguished guest. Oh? Chief of the Hoses. My family were involved with his forebears in the Eastern Cape. South Africa, Sergeant. Yes, sir, quite. I was wondering about security, actually. Whether it might not be advisable to have some sort of police presence. Bob is at a party? What sort of impression would that make? That's what I was thinking, plain clothes. Well, same difference. Most of my guests would recognise your men. Well, that's true, I suppose. Except for one. There you go. Some mustard. Where is he? Who? Oh, His Highness. He doesn't want to be disturbed by riffraff. Oh, well, that clears me, then. If he is. How did you know that was him? Easy. You've splashed out on the serviette for him. Pardon my interruption, uh, but I believe my driver had the pleasure of your custom earlier today. It was a David, was it? Uh, yes, uh, Vernon Scripps of Scripps Taxis. Uh, might I have a word? Please. Oh. First off, were you happy with our service? Mm, perfectly, thank you. Oh, good. Only it's my company's first brush with royalty. Oh, you're a chieftain, I understand. Yeah, but I really wouldn't let that worry Worrying about the comfort and convenience of our customers is what we get paid for, Your Majesty. <laughs> and since I hear that you're to be guest of honour at Ashfordley Hall tonight, it would be my pleasure to show for you there at no cost to yourself. Well, of course you can take me, but I'm not looking for a free ride, Mr Scripps. Well, it wouldn't be free exactly. You see, I'd like your royal seal of approval in return. Hmm. Uh, how do you spell that? X H O S A. Soap, sir. Yeah. And uh, and the other bit. Not 
Chat. Thank you. Trouble. I'm going undercover. Undercover? Where? To a party at Ashfordley Hall. Why you? Nobody knows me around here. Oh, please. Sarge, uh, news on the identification of Ashfordley's pieces. They're uh, South African in origin, either Zulu or uh, Exosa. It seems that Patrick Mason isn't such a good judge of artefacts after all. Well, this has been deliberately misleading us. Get the new description circulated, will you? Right. Uh, oh, um, Sarge, don't you think Nicholson's a bit green for solo undercover work? Very probably. What's the point? Well, I was just wondering if somebody should go with him, Sarge, you know, um, fellow guest sort of thing. He's going as a waiter, not a guest, but I mean... Oh, a waiter? But if you have a suggestion... No, 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 waiter's, uh, perfect. So this Hauser King is Chief Maquetso's ancestor. Yeah. And would have known my grandfather. On and off the battlefield. The last frontier war, 1878, ended with the King's death. The tribe was disarmed and their land incorporated into the Cape Colony. Brought into the fold, eh? Fascinating, thank you. What is that? It's your transport. Stealth on wheels. It's a museum piece. Well, do you want to go on this or a bus? I'll think about it. All right. Just as long as it's after dark. Chief Maquette, sir. Thank you for the invitation. Honoured and delighted to have you as my guest. Do come for General Archibald Ashfordley of the Frontier Light Horse. My grandfather. An impressive portrait. Indeed. I've read some of his letters about his time in the Eastern Cape. Spent a lot of it defending your people from the Dutch, I believe. Is that so? A man of high principle, it was always said. As a boy, I'd look up to this portrait. Wonder how I could ever match up to him. Sorry, I came in, couldn't resist. Yeah, right. I'm Patrick. Patrick Mason, staying over at the lodge. Oh, don't worry, me and his lordship are like that. So aren't you in there? Mm, good question. Oh, I'm too busy. Yeah, me too. Sorry. I haven't seen you before. Yeah, I'm new here. Well, maybe see you around here. Yeah, all right.
So, what else are you planning to do while you're in Yorkshire? No, nothing else. To meet you was my goal. My father had always promised the people that he'd make the journey. And when he died, I felt it was up to me to keep his promise. Well, I'm flattered, I must say. Sometimes I feel a little mad But don't you know that no one alive can always be an angel When things go wrong I seem to be bad I'm just a soul whose intentions are good Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood Sometimes I'm so carefree With a joy that's hard to hide And sometimes it seems that All I have to do is worry And then you're bound to see my other side I'm just a soul whose intentions are good Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood When I wrote, I didn't mean to put you to so much trouble. Nonsense. Dare I'm only repaying an old family debt. <laughs> Maybe so. But I have another request that may impose on your generosity even more. Oh, what's that? The Hoser people say that the general brought back trophies of his military campaigns. You mean mementos and such? Mm, masks, sculptures, and other items containing the spirits of our ancestors. Things of a deep cultural significance to the tribe. I see. Well, my father promised his people that one day he would repatriate them. Repatriate them? Yes. And that's why you're here? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. If you're asking me to hand over treasured family possessions, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. No, I'm sorry. I've put it badly. No, no. You've made yourself very clear, Chief Maketsu. And I don't think that the General would be in the least bit impressed. Five to control. Receiving. Thank you very much for your hospitality, Lord Ashridley. My pleasure. I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Offended you. Forget all about it, shall we? I wish I could. I do hope you will reconsider my requests. Well, then I'm afraid there's nothing more to be said. Excuse me. Till tomorrow, Your Majesty. Around 10 o'clock. I'll bring a photographer, and if you could wear exactly what you're wearing now. Was that part of the deal? Pomp and splendor by the bucketful. That's what we want. All right, see you in the morning. Daniel. Patrick, good to see you, man. You too. How are you doing? No, I'm doing well. Come and see how well. What? their rightful owner. Right. Stay exactly where you are. Your student existence seems to have loosened your grip on reality, Mr. Mason. It wasn't stealing. So you say. It's the Ashfordley family who've done the stealing. I doubt very much of a court will see it like that. Come in. Sergeant, Lord Ashford is here. Oh. Good morning, sir. What's good about it, Craddock? You put this young man on the job last night and things still went a well. 
Not to mention glass breakages and a nasty stain on the carpet. Oh, yes. I'm sorry about that, sir. However, I think you'll find Constable Nicholson hasn't been wasting his time. Good Lord. Is this all your property, sir? Well, I assume so. Don't you know, sir? I have cellars and attics full of junk, Craddock. I can't be expected to recognise everything. Thank you. So you didn't know what Mr. Mason was doing? No. But you say you're to blame. When we were students together, I took him home to South Africa on the vacation. I introduced him to the people, their way of life. It made him passionate about our cause. But you didn't conspire with him to steal? No. So why did you come here? To ask Lord Ashfordley to give back something that belonged to my ancestors, the dead Hosea King. Something of no monetary value, but of great spiritual importance to our people. Well, I thought if I'd explained this to him, he'd do the honourable thing. You planned this from the beginning? Yeah. Together? No. Hard to believe. Deception is not in Daniel's nature. Or his people's. That's why they've been so easily double-crossed. Double-crossed? By the British. After men like Archibald Ashfordley put them to the sword, we took their land. Drove thousands into labour for white farmers. It's still going on. I don't doubt your sincerity, Mr Mason. But you're going about things the wrong road. Ashfordley would never give the stuff back of his own free will. So you took it? And I didn't have to kill or mutilate anyone to do it. I'm shocked. I gave both men my hospitality all the time they were planning this. Well, Mason claims he was simply recovering items looted by your grandfather. Oh, I see. Caught in the act, so he tries to blacken a proud name. Well, I've no fears on that score. You throw the book at them, Sergeant. Hello? Sharp! Oh, hello, Gina, love. What do you want? Uh, Chief Maketsu. He's agreed to do a publicity shot for me. Is he ready? I don't think so. What's he doing? Porridge. Oh, well. A man deserves to have a good breakfast. <laughs> I mean he's in the nick, behind bars. Yes. Well, look, we'll take a good look round and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Thank you very much for calling. Bye-bye. That's your statement. I believe him. Yes. So do I. But we don't count, do we? That was Mrs Parker's daughter on the phone, the old lady we brought in for shoplifting. She said she's lost a very valuable ring and wants to know if we found one. Right. Good news, Mrs Kellett. The police have detained Patrick Mason and Daniel Maketso. What for? Stealing my African artefacts. Surely not, sir. Caught with the booty, Mrs K. They'll all be coming back just as soon as the court has dealt with them. Five minutes? No. One photo is all I need. Mr Maketso's in custody. He isn't available for personal appearances. Look, all I need him to do is stand in the yard. You can cuff him to the taxi if it makes life easier. I'm perfectly at ease with the way things are. Just my flaming look. Is your car the one David drove Mrs Parker to the shops in? You are. Mrs Parker, the old lady we brought in for shoplifting. Did she ride in your car? Why? She's misplaced a ring. Prize family heirloom. Her daughter's been asking if she lost it here. Very interesting. There's a £50 reward for the finder. Oh, I. Hmm. Hello, Mrs. Kellett. Hello. I hear you've arrested Patrick and Mr. Maketso. Uh, yes, we're um, questioning them now. I've got to know Patrick a little, Constable. And I'm sure he thinks what he did was for the best. Well, I can't comment on that, I'm afraid. No, I suppose not. Anyway, I've got something for them to eat. Is that allowed? Just to cheer them up? Well... Could you do that for me?
Bradley, you stay here with Mr. Makatsu. Nicholson, get the spade. What is this nonsense, Craddock? It may well prove to be nonsense, sir, but it's best to clear it up now rather than let false allegations fester. Well, search the house as much as you want, but my guess is that anything relevant to that gentleman's already in the van you impounded. Won't need to search the house at all, sir. Huh? Over there, I think. Over here, I think. Just a moment, Craddock. You can't go rootling around in there. It's a pet cemetery. Care will be taken, my lord. Dig, please, Nicholson. What is it, Sarge? It's a head. A what? A severed head. Who is it? Well, according to Mr. Maketsu, it's the head of his ancestor. Severed by Archibald Ashfordley in 1878 and brought back here as a souvenir. More than 20 years ago. No idea who it was or where it came from. Just wanted to get it buried. Of course, the press are going to have a field day. The more grisly the discovery, the better they like it. Well, it's publicity absolutely necessary, Craddock. Well, it's bound to come out when Mr. Mason and Mr. Maketsu appear in court. I appreciate it puts your family name in a less than savoury light. Well, that's not my main concern, Sergeant. Oh? Well, the dignity of the victim must be uppermost in our minds. Yes, of course. And that won't be best served in a lurid Sunday rag. Now, the fact is, Craddock, this has not only turned my stomach, it's also changed my mind. In what way, my lord? I'd like to make restitution to Chief Maketso and his people by returning the head and the artefacts to their rightful homeland. Thank you, my lord. Such statesmanship is rare. And do you still intend to press charges, sir? Well, of course not, Craddock. And Mr. Mason? He's a different matter. Then I'm sorry, sir, I cannot accept your offer if Patrick stays in custody. I mean, what he did was misguided, but not for personal gain. Be lenient, sir, and your name will be revered forever in our folklore. Tell me, um, if I agree, will this whole ghastly business remain a private matter? Of course. Everyone should be allowed to worship their ancestors. Get off, then. Yeah. Mind how you go. Thanks. How did you know about the head? I saw him bury it. I didn't know what it was, but whenever I went near that spot, I knew something was amiss. I've never felt such a powerful presence. Yeah. Yeah. He's going home now. Yes. I knew someone would come for him. Let's hope the poor soul can find some peace at last. Cheerio, then.
Is there any chance of you two lending us a hand here? We've done our share of looking in there. What are you doing, Mr Vernon? What does it look like, David? Looks like you had a car crash, but from the inside out. It's... I am looking for a lost ring belonging to the batty old girl you went shopping with. What, Miss Mrs Parker? Yes. There's a reward going begging. A reward? Yes. Well, there's no need for that. <laughs> I'll save that until I saw her. <laughs> 